Hi everyone, Kelvin here. Gonna do a kind of special thing, a sort of vintage shootout. Amps and receivers, all from the 70s, 1970 to 1980, everything here. Different countries, Denmark, Japan, Britain, Sweden. Marantz you might call American. On the back of that Marantz it says designed in America, made in Japan. Yes, that's it. Um, so I'm going to take you through each one. I'll bring the camera in, get you have a good look at them. We're going to go through each one, look at the back, look at the front, look at the features, and I'll tell you what they sound like and how they sound compared to each other. There are some pretty big differences. And at the end, I'll tell you where, which one I would keep, you know, or which, no, I don't know which one I keep, which one I would take to a desert island because I figured that is actually a good way to think about it. Because if you don't just say you've got to pick one, you kind of land up wanting to pick three. And then you don't pick the best one. You know, you don't want to make these decisions. Uh, but anyway, that's what I'm going to do. And so this could take a fair bit of time, should be quite enjoyable. And let's get into it. Okay. Sony TA1010. This is from 1971. This is the oldest amp with, that's here. They didn't even put the code number on the front. It just says uh, integrated solid amplifier solid state. Uh, and it has these very annoying just screw terminals to put your speaker wires on where the tighter you squeeze it, the more the wire wants to come out. So it's very annoying. But what do we have here? I mean, I won't spend a lot of time on this one really early. You know, the vintage sound, big, boisterous, probably the nearest relationship. Honestly, I would put it next to the Pioneer. The Pioneer will be better, but this would be, everything's big. You, you, you will turn this on a 15 watts. You will not be thinking you're listening to a low power amp. Sometimes, well, not sometimes, but most times they're the thing with, let's say, less expensive things or vintage things that, the sounds are bigger, like the snare drum will be a big, loud, room filling thing. And sometimes when you get really expensive gear, everything kind of gets a bit more miniaturized and detailed and probably correct. But, you know, that's what happens when you go higher up, higher end, and then you need better speakers to really exploit this extra detail. This will just jump out and grab you around the neck and throw you around the room. It's kind of teenage. I think of this like, well, I think of a teenager when I think of this amplifier. And it, you know, it's not a bad thing. As the vintage stuff goes, Sony were pretty damn good. I would put Sony, you know, up there, certainly close to Sansui, Marantz. They were good, you know, not, this is a bit too old. You want to be a bit younger. Maybe, you know, just get to 1975. And that they would sort of uh, get a bit more refined and better, but you know, a kind of, a kind of teenager's first amplifier, it blast the house out and have a thoroughly good time. So the NAD 3020, every teenager and young man had this amp. This is an absolute classic British amp, yeah. 3020, 20 watts, came out in 1980, yeah. So this is actually the uh, the youngest or the latest amp we have here. What can I say about this amp? It has a sound. When I think about this amp, I think, oh, I can't really compare it to everything else. I can't really put it better or worse, bass, treble, whatever it is. It's kind of got its own kind of sound. It's got its own sound and it's a very intimate sound. It presents the bass in the right proportions, a bit forward. The vocals maybe are a bit bigger than ordinarily, and that's nice. It's probably a bit trailed off at the top end, which kind of enhances the mid-range. It's not like super high and, and super high frequency yeah i suppose that is something you would you would definitely say about it but it gives it this sort of mellow involving warmth in the middle you know this is something i say a lot about amps it's got to give you something 
it's got to give you something good if it's not the base if it's not the top it's not the middle if it's not giving you any one thing in abundance you don't get involved this gives you low end and and mid band in abundance you can get very involved with this absolute classic uh british amp look let me try and compare try and say a few things about it um you know as far as detail well i can't know that's probably not the way to do it uh well as things i i would prefer it to that i wouldn't see a lot of these things i can't say i prefer it or not because it's just kind of different i think i should just leave it like that you know i will do a thing at the end and say which one i'll really take with me but um it's just got a bit of a unique sound about it and it's super involving that's what i gotta say and uh, you know classic british thing that was a huge amp huge amp for the time okay bang and olufsen 1900 stroke two it's sublimely good looking yeah it's just all these controls everything it just looks fantastic this was designed by famous bang and olufsen designer jacob jensen or jacob jensen depending on where you live he designed a lot of the stuff from the late 60s through the 70s and i gotta say as i was researching it and i know what that stuff looks like you know i've seen all i've seen all his designs they're just superb you just look at it and it's you know it's got other elements it just does not remind you or compare to the world of this hi-fi just looks crass it looks it looks clumsy compared it's just it's sublime the man was originally a furniture designer and i think one thing that is interesting is he would design things for the looks and he would spend days and weeks making models and he'd wake up in the morning look at it and go oh that bit's too thin that bit's too wide this should be this color you know he's a real perfectionist and but he wasn't an electrical engineer hardly at all from what i can tell i'm pretty sure he wasn't so this leads to sort of some of the problems you have with bang and olufsen which is it, it breaks a lot you've got to know this yeah bang and olufsen breaks a lot you know there's a lot crammed in here you know the transformer is this big things get hot things you know it's just you know it's famous i know bang and olufsen famously break now this this amp as an amp it does work but you kind of have to hold your fingers on this balance uh, button yeah because there's there's some kind of loose connection there so this does work uh but you know they are famously they do break but let me uh talk about the sound here uh in a bit more detail i mean i'm going to kind of call this the nordic sound the, these people denmark norway sweden they're very serious about their sound they're very serious about hi-fi systems so a lot of uh suppliers of drivers tweeters woofers tweeters all that stuff originate and come from that area so they're just serious people about sound so there's no cheap nonsense coming out of those countries yes now if i was to describe this sound to you it's it's a quality bit of kit yeah it's a quality bit of kit it's probably and it's probably in the upper 50 percent sound wise compared to all of these it's super smooth it is super smooth i mean whenever i think about this amp i i don't know why but i literally always imagine some fantastic modern house overlooking a giant field field yeah and that's you know a, um, a lake or an inlet and you know it's a sort of sound you can listen to it all day the bass is loose bass is good okay bass is better than the japanesey stuff i would say it's more refined it's more detailed and it has that you know a sound that i would call you know a sign of quality where the bass 
and the mid band feel like they're separate they don't muddy each other or the bass doesn't muddy up the mid band uh what can i say just super smooth super pleasant listen to it all day looks sublime that's probably about it and as i say i'd put it in the top 50 percent sound wise that i would like with this lot here okay that's the bang and olufsen bowmaster 1900 stroke two so sansui 331 receiver from 1975 12 watts a channel but don't worry unless you're gonna have a you have a huge room or anything like that it doesn't matter one of my favorite amps i play this a lot yeah this is part of a range 221 331 441 up to 881 i got them all apart from the 221 this is just the best sounding one they sound similar the whole range but you know somehow or other if you looked inside they'll all be quite different you know and this one is just hitting the mark cohesive sound just cohesive it's got it's just got the right proportions and everything bass is reasonably good you know this is not a high-end bit of kit you're not getting massive detail in the bass but you're getting dynamics nice mid-range where things are right vocals are good i mean it is a bit of a, a little giant killer a bit of a demon amp that's so small so low powered but it's it's just super enjoyable you know uh what else could i say let's so uh, yeah compare it to some of these things okay this would be more refined than say this sony i would say a bit more refined than the pioneer not as refined as the bang and olufsen or this sonab eh, probably quite not as refined as the other sansui 317 but it's got something it's got enough to for me to relax and enjoy uh if you go up the range to say the 881 that's like 45 or 55 watts suddenly you'll have really low bass you'll get some real big bass you better have some big cones to exploit that yeah so if you're only playing on small speakers a giant amp like the the 55 the 881 it'll choke most small speakers or bookshelf size you know this kind of thing speakers it'll just choke it with excess energy so it doesn't work out so this amp put it with some decent little speakers it really delivers it's literally one of my favorites i play all the time but i'm not saying this is a high-end bit of kit but it's enjoyable sonab r 400 1971 40 watts swedish but guess what guess where this was made in england you can see that on the back i don't know if i'm showing that to you now but it's on the back so, uh, you know design in sweden i guess made in england which kind of amazed me okay um i mean it's all metal it's nice even those not even these ones here they're real nice these switches are nice you know there are times when build quality can kind of uh, sort of sway you you know what i mean you go oh it's, i just really like it you know and this is a very well made substantial bit of kit again is that nordic sound yeah they're taking it seriously this one even more than anything is it's sort of so smooth i don't know how to uh where to begin that the that things could get more smooth yes i mean even the bass isn't it's kind of fine and, and fairly detailed but even the base the bass is kind of detailed but kind of the edges are rolled off it the edges are softened so uh it's like the bang and olufsen but even more so even more easy listening high frequencies are lovely detailed you know space detailed positioning real nice just real nice you know class i've got to say that that's a class bit of kit um 
let me sort of try and compare so if I was to put this one in this would clearly be better than this Sony I would put it I'd actually put it above the Marantz the Pioneer uh, you know it's getting up there this NAD is a kind of thing on its own because it has its own has its own kind of unique sound um, but you know what would I say it's just real class kit this is a radio amp by the way now something that's worth noting this is 40 watts a channel that's what it says but I can tell you it doesn't feel like 40 watts a channel when you're turning the volume knob up it doesn't feel like it has lots of power the one that really has clearly the most power is that Sugden British one yeah Sugden A48 I mean the Marantz has feels like it's pretty beefy and the Sansui 317 is pretty beefy but uh, you know there's just sometimes things say two things say 40 watts and they do not seem to have the same amount of clout about them at all you know so but the beefiest one in this whole thing is this Sugden and we'll come to that in a little while so um but you know yeah this amp receiver super smooth swedish nordic beautiful listen you could listen to this all day and all night you would just never get tired of this sound there is nothing offensive about any of it you know it's um, uber smooth what can i say and actually worth mentioning this makes sonab it's there are, I wouldn't say they're under the radar but you know they didn't make that much gear they made some vertical speakers that fired upwards which you'll see quite a lot of but you'll see this amp I mean I got this about two or three years ago for about 70 pounds uh, but they're sort of fairly unknown and there's a more powerful amp than this one uh, so they're, they're that unknown that sometimes they go for a little bit of uh, low amounts of money because they don't have a big reputation but you know this is a class bit of kit for sure this is class um, yeah. and here it is the Marantz the most humdinger of all the amps receivers I've got here actually it was hard to lift this up this Marantz is very heavy the Sugden is actually very heavy um, just to uh, give you a little you know it's these all these buttons are so lovely everything's so heavy you actually have dual controls here see that that's two separate left and right is that bass or treble that's bass that's treble oh it has bass mid and bass mid treble you can also both sides yeah it's such a good looking thing you know so many buttons so many features just a really gorgeous thing you know now i want to say this thing that the look you know if marantz didn't look as good as they look and they look even better at night when the bulbs are in which my I've still got my bulb kit over there but if they didn't look that fantastic which they do they wouldn't be so desirable and but I don't blame you for wanting it because I want it too because it just looks that great but it is not as re perfectly reflected in the sound yeah and I'm not saying it sounds bad I'll do it in a minute but uh, there's so much attention paid to the detailing of here if you look at this back panel yeah this little uh, plate even that is like a, a thing of beauty it's got all these different typefaces and you'll see there what it says um, made in uh, designed in America is it made in Japan yes I think American based company certainly for a good while uh, just gorgeous and heavy duty I'll do the sound what would I say this sound this is one of those things you will plug it in 
and it will really impress you straight away and it would probably impress me and I remember going into into hi-fi shops in Tottenham Court Road and listening to a certain track or whatever it was because there'll be things that will jump out that you are not usually hearing and you'll hear it whoops on this because it has a little bit of a mid-range lift yes now I don't know if that's a trick that they put in to get people impressed in you know when what they used to do in those days which was go in a shop and listen to the machine you know listen to the hi-fis but or whether that's just how they liked to do their sound you know but uh it has a little bit of a mid-range lift it's got a lot of it's got quite a bit of it's got some grip yes it has got some grip in the bass probably this Marantz and the Sugden are the ones that really have get hold of that bass and make it go where it should go more than any of the others I would say you know and it's sort of it's quite it's a little bit gritty not gritty but it's a little bit uh you know i don't know it's it's visceral it's taut it's uh it's really kind of stringy you know you really hear the string it's got it's got some welly to this thing but for me and i have to be honest i'm always telling you the truth of what i think for me the marantz and the pioneer are just a little bit edgy you know, just a little bit edgy I mean, maybe you probably may gather that I don't like any edginess. I really can't. This is not something I can deal with. But uh, if, if anything, the Marantz has got an edge, edge, sharpness in the mid range. I mean, you know, you can tame that with a super smooth speakers. You can what you can't have is anything rough going into it you know anything cheap a cheap turntable with a cheap cartridge going into it if you're using a streamer that's real clean about as clean and nice as you can get you know so uh, you know that might iron out its edginess you know um the other thing about this is you've got uh, uh, pre-power separation at the back with the plugs now amazingly because this is such a humdinger of a thing that they don't have the little jump leads between them this little metal bar that other amps would have which you'd have to pull out it seems to know if you plug a power amp in or a preamp in somehow or other it knows that you've done it uh, because normally you'd have to have these little connectors in but you know this is the sort of thing that made japanese vintage desirable marantz pioneer you know yamaha stuff like that just looks so good you know and it's like you know you sort of think of your amplifier sometimes as like oh this is your music system it's it's slightly religious that you want it to be a great thing when you listen to that music at night and this is all lit up blue it looks so good and it's um you know somehow or other you're you're worshiping this machine that's giving you the sound you know something like that um so yeah yeah okay i've said what i want to say about that marantz 2238 bl 38 watts that's the marantz always did that if it's 2225 is 25 watts other people don't do that here is okay. sansui au317 it's japanese 1977 50 watts a channel this is an amp i play a lot and uh it has a lovely i don't know if you can hear these things you know switches everything's metal everything's solid feels solid feels good and it's a solid performer and i mean that sonically you know whenever i'm playing around with amps and i'll put that amp on sort of as an as my sort of standard or you know something i play a lot i normally just go oh this sounds good compared to all this other stuff 
that I've been playing around with, you know. It never disappoints me. I never put it on and go, oh, it's not, it doesn't sound as good as the one before. It always delivers. It's got that rightness. It just gets it all right. The presentation, the proportions, you know, it's got a good bit of uh, dynamic clout about it. Um, this is from this is 77 so this is like the area of Sansui when things get a bit patchy I've got to say this because Sansui is incredibly hard to describe what amps are good and bad mostly because they're all called AU something and there's tons of them so if they you know I can't say this range that range it's all AU and a number um, but you know there are other amps that come a little bit later than this where things are going a bit wrong for Sansui. Most of the good Sansui is early 70 to 75, but this is 77 and this is an absolute winner. Uh, it's got at the back pre-power separation. So you could use a, a separate preamp or power amp. I would use this power amp and use a modern preamp, maybe a valve preamp, something like that. But the best part of separating old stuff with the pre-power separation most times it's the power amp i would use the power amp of the marantz too which is actually cuts out because there's so much circuitry in the marantz preamp with all its tone controls and buttons you kind of want to utilize the power amp of that too anyway what am i talking about let me carry on with this sansui it's just one of my favorite amps it gets everything right it doesn't annoy me it's dynamic it delivers it's solid yeah i don't know that's probably uh, what can i say anymore you know it's got you know even the, the, the sansui sound is a sweet open nice bass it's a superior end this, maybe i should say this i without a doubt to me sansui is a superior of the japanese stuff ultimately the british stuff that was around at the time which I, I haven't been mentioning much but like Sugden for sure and Quad I haven't got any Quad here but Quad were massive in the 70s particularly the Quad 303 power amp which we used to plug into the NAD we used that as a power amp you know you use the NAD preamp and the, change the power amp for the Quad Quad is a class class stuff yeah so the 303 it's very famous very uh, tons of them about if they've been well kept that's their class class things quad 303 probably not the 405 i don't think so much of the 303 is just like a a stalwart you know you can't go wrong with a quad 303 um okay. so yeah there now, you have it the Sanchez pioneer sx 550 pioneer famously almost the the face of the vintage sound really probably the pioneer and marantz are probably the names that people think of most when they think of vintage stereo uh because they're, they're good looking and they manage to put millions of buttons on i mean this one hasn't got millions of buttons it's a small one but uh part kind of one of the you know the uh, the thing about the vintage receiver was just buttons marantz could get more buttons than you possibly imagine even onto a tuner they would have muting stereo mono funny things they even put an oscilloscope on a tuner on a big receiver you know like a like a radar looking thing so you know this was kind of this is part of the attraction part of the attraction um but this pioneer nice you know nice buttons blah 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 lights up sound wise where would i put it how does it contrast and compare i would put it in the same camp let's say that as the sony the marantz and maybe this maybe the sansui but i would actually just put the sansui is more refined this is a big bouncy party sound that uh i mean maybe, maybe would i call this teenager sound i think i might do i might call it teenager now if you get a dedicated pioneer amp that's probably going to sound a bit better you know but as i've said in my recent review of this 
I experienced this amp when I was young and the sound it had then is the sound it has now. So it's not a degradation question uh, about this amp, this receiver, but it's a big forward in your face. Uh, it's enjoyable, you know, it's, it's enjoyable for a, a while. But let's, if you were to compare this to say the Sonab, that would be the most dramatic contrast you could get because the Sonab would be like a laid back dude and the Pioneer would be like an overexcited football hooligan or something like that. I don't know. It's a silly, <laughs> what am I doing with these analogies? But the Sonab is smooth, mellow, more refined. This is bigger, bolder. You've got to say the word brasher, really. I have to say the word brasher. Um, but yeah, like the face of vintage and what a lot of people think of as their go-to vintage sound. But, you know, so then you have there in the 70s, these different places, the different countries, they're kind of doing different things. They're kind of like the British were trying to make things sound as dead good as they could. Some of the Japanese were trying to make things sound dead good. I would say Sansui were one of them. Other ones wanted it to sound good, but also they spent a lot of money on the looks, you know? And then also, if you look at the Bang & Olufsen, they were spending a lot of money on the looks and they were super, the Bang & Olufsen would have been, I don't know, two or three times more expensive than any of these, but it looked fantastic. And it sounded pretty good because they had, they're spending so much money on it, they could make it look good and sound pretty good too. But uh, yeah, okay, that's that. Pioneer SX550. 20 watts, did I say that? And we have J. Sugden A48. That's J. E. Sugden, James Sugden, British. This amp is 1976, 40 watts, it says. But I'm going to tell you, this is the most powerful amp of all the lot. And it's got the kind of bass that will like push you off the settee. It's just really, uh, this is a humdinger of an amplifier. Yes, this is, it's got the biggest sound stage. I mean, I was just thinking about this. I was thinking, does it make the sound stage kind of so big that it's not correct? It almost feels like it makes the sound stage bigger than it really is, you know? But um, this is honestly a really classy amp. Uh, tons of bass, but that's very forward and it doesn't muddy up the mid range. It's nice, it's so clear and spacious. I remember listening to the track Five Years, David Bowie on vinyl. And I just plugged this years ago, yeah? And I just plugged this amp in and I put that track on. And that track starts like, like quiet and they literally turn it up go boom 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 but it gets louder and louder and i remember playing that on this amp and like thinking even when it was quiet i had the sound stage things were in position and then it just got louder and louder i was just really impressed because that's like that's the grip yes the positioning and the grip this is the number one for that and they're probably number one for a lot of things but yeah positioning and grip and tight taut powerful bass and airy treble mm, top end and, you know if i was to be critical you could say it has too much bass if you have bassy speakers big speakers you have gotta have big speakers with this if you put this on with some small speakers, you know, like, you know, those things, whatever they are, you know, all those small speakers that cost two or three hundred pounds, it would just kind of flood the whole box with so much bass. It would literally choke that speaker and it would choke the mid range only because the speaker is too small. So this is a scenario. You just want a great big speaker. You want a 12 inch 
driver if you can you know or something that's got a big box that's got some air that's got some uh, capacity in it but not a small speaker in a small box you know no way no way i mean i kind of when i look this amp i think of it seriously it's like a rolls royce because it has this effortless power it just you, you don't need much on the volume knob and you just get this sense that there's loads of reserves of power so your dynamics are really easily you know it, it, it handles dynamics gigantically fantastically explosively it's never feeling small it always feels like it has reserves of power now you're probably getting the impression i really like this amp and i do really like this amp and but i will point one thing out i haven't played this amp for about two years because it's broken so this is probably why you haven't heard me talk about it much recently but this is an absolute class amp uh yeah i don't know what more to say you could possibly criticize it for having too much bass but really this is like high-end good stuff it's really you gotta say it's superior to almost everything else here it's it's superior to the Marantz, the pioneer the nad what else have we got here the sewn up it's it's kind of superior it's it, when I say, but you could say, oh, I don't like that sound because it's flooding me with powerful bass. You could say that. But you've got to say absolute class. Yeah, really, you know, if I was to think which has been engineered with the most thought and care for, you know, the components and all that stuff, I'd probably say that one. Sugden A48 it's a humdinger if you if you look up sugged and stuff they've been making like power amps since like 19 they've been making stuff since the mid 60s they were making quality stuff in the late 60s which is you know when a lot of people hadn't really mastered things or the japanese hadn't really um and that stuff still goes for you know like people are buying preamps from 1968 for 300 pounds now, I wouldn't buy the preamp. I, I might buy the power amp. But to me, the preamps are the things that don't work so well over time. Uh, but I would buy an old power, Sugden power amp. But um, yeah, like when I say, I think it's a real class bit of kit. And I wish it worked, really. That would be good. <laughs> okay, Sugden A48, British. So, to conclude the shootout, what one would I take to a desert island if i can only take one i would take that one sensory au317 it's just a solid performer it puts a smile on my face it's got a quite a lot of detail it's just a good thing and if i had a second place i would have this sugden now, the only reason i'm not saying the sugden first place is because sometimes I feel like it's actually embellishing reality. It's giving more bass. It's giving a bigger sound stage. And, you know, even though that's dramatic and fun, sometimes I think, oh, God, is this even real? It's, uh, so I would put that uh, second. And uh, third, I'd actually maybe put the Sansui 331. Again, it's the nice presentation of the Sansui sound. That, you know it's just bang on you know it's just in it doesn't annoy it's dynamic blah 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 if i had to put something last i'd have to put that sony last it's just the cheapest thing and everything else is in the middle somewhere i'll let you decide i mean most of these things are a bit good yeah they're not just a cross section of any bit of vintage because i wouldn't still have them i wouldn't they wouldn't be in my possession if they weren't a bit good you know what i mean so um this is not like a random sample of vintage stuff so okay there you have it i hope you learned something there and i'm just sharing all my knowledge about hi-fi you know that's why i started this channel i'm just going to tell everyone thing everyone everything i know because information is hard to come by good information there's a lot of nonsense going on out there
okay loads more videos on my channel thanks for watching bye now